Well, let's talk about these WWE financials. Everything's great. Well, they made a they 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 made a record profit. Um, what was the profit number? Like forty eight million, forty seven, forty eight million. I got it right over here. Um, forty eight million, four hundred eighty five thousand dollars in profit for quarter number three for this year. Record quarter. Um, record quarter here. It, it it pays to not run shows in a pandemic. And to have strong television deals. Well, the TV, I mean, the whole business is TV deals now. I mean, it's just a completely different business than it's ever been. Yeah, the um, the revenue, which was $221,595,000 for the quarter, like the analysts, I mean, predicting WWE revenue, the revenue is, is actually pretty easy. I mean, everyone was pretty much within, you know, $2 million in either in one direction or another on this one. Actually, most were higher. Um but but within about actually about a million and a half because um, but the profit margin was I mean everybody the ex- expectations on the profit margin were over thirty million thirty to thirty five but you know forty eight was well above what almost everybody thought so um, they just um, they saved a lot of money now next quarter will not be as good they told told everyone in advance next quarter will not be as good um, a lot of the money I think that it's money. That they have to spend on the um, the Thunderdome is twenty two to twenty seven million dollars. Um, that is earmarked for the next quarter and 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 other things too. That's not the only thing that that does. That's not all. You know that alone is not that twenty two to twenty seven, but it's the bulk of it. So um, yeah, it won't be quite as profitable next quarter. But um, I mean, look, the company's fine. I mean, as far as financially, I mean, it's fine until. Um, you know, 2023, and then after that, um, or 2020, well, let's see, um, actually, I should say it, it's fine until the the latter stages of 2024, and yeah, after that, it's probably going to be fine after that, too. I mean, it's financially, they're, they're, they're in smooth shape. Them and UFC, I don't even worry about financially anymore. Um, now, profit, you know, I mean, not probably, but, um, uh, you know, as far as like popularity, that's it, the different that, you know, that's a completely different issue. I mean, it's 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 a long, you know, like this whole business was built on having to be popular to make money. And it's no longer the case. Um, you just have to, um, you know, you, you have to churn out product um, and, you know, I mean, you can't nosedive, and and they did nosedive this year, but they quelled it. Um, you know, I mean, we learned we learned a hell of a lot this year. I mean, one of the things is is that a key part of wrestling is the location and the. Um, I mean, at, well, we always knew atmosphere was, but the location and the look of the place, because I mean, if you, the minute they got out of that, um, you know, um, performance center, and into an arena i mean you know i mean they were nose diving and then they turned it around um so well i think it's not so much the look of the place i mean it's it's more are there people there does it feel like it's alive does it feel like there there are people i mean i i've seen a million wwe shows where oh they're in corpus christi today oh they're in portland today it's like i couldn't tell you where the fuck they were they they all look exactly you know ufc and wwe they always look the same that's which actually i think is it i think is a negative um but but that is what it is They, they 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 shoot the show the same it always looks the same it doesn't matter you could be in you know hong kong and you could be in washington dc and you know except for the the how the spectators look at themselves everything looks but that's the point it has to be the spectators and i remember when the when the pandemic started and we had the empty arena shows i got a lot of people that would send in messages to observer live they would email tweet whatever and they said i'm done i'm not watching until the people come back and at the time i kind of thought really you're not going to watch just because there's no people there but it's it's but it happened that actually happened they just stopped watching because there were no fans yeah, no. Wrestling needs people. It looks absolutely silly without it, unless you work a certain style, which is like a Minoru Suzuki style. You can do that with no people, and and you know, like Walter and Ilya Dragunov, and and beat the holy hell out of each other, and or you know, like watching a UFC fight. You can do that with no fans, but the the style of pro wrestling that the WWE teaches those people were fishes out of water trying to work the you know the cell and waiting for the fan response with no fans i mean it's it's preposterous looking so now it's you know now it's better um 
And, you know, it shows with the numbers. I mean, and, and there's there's also, I mean, I, I do have to say that, like, as far as, like, SmackDown goes, um, you know, they've got two pretty hot angles right now. Although, it's like Roman Reigns is hot, but usually you need two to tango. And, man, I don't know who the who's he going to tango with. I mean, I mean, this, this month's oh, got to be Daniel care. Bryan. Oh, my God. I mean, but, like, the, the way Daniel Bryan was booked this week? Well, I mean, I'm sure I, the I, idea is that Daniel Bryan's going to have to go through Jey Uso, and then after he gets through Jey Uso, he can get through Roman. I mean, they probably have some sort of storyline there, but in the meantime... I guess, I mean, but... They're, they're, if, for if the next had, month, it doesn't matter, because it's Roman Reigns and, and Randy Orton coming yeah, yeah, up yeah. in Survivor Series, so okay, you don't have to it, have anything till December. Yeah, but you should be setting something up. No, we'll see the, with Daniel Bryan. If it was going to be Daniel Bryan... They should have had a very different finish. I mean, they could do the post match, but he needed to win that match. And there's no reason with Jey Uso turning heel that he couldn't have lost the match, other than, I mean, I'm reading this as Daniel Bryan, you know, mentally going like, okay, you know, um, you know, I mean, just what he said. I'm, I'm not as good, and my job is to put over. You know, he's on the writing team, and he's my. You know, it's kind of like what a lot of guys. You got two sets of guys in power. You got the egomaniacs in power, who use the power to just get themselves over and then um now there's more than that there's people who also look out for business and know that sometimes we got to win and sometimes we got to lose and all that but then there's the ones who get power and think okay you know my job is to get young fan young wrestlers over and i mean i can see where daniel bryan's coming from well yes but there's there's an issue here and that is that you can't just go in there and just put everybody over otherwise it doesn't mean anything I mean, yeah. you don't see Chris Jericho going in there and just putting everybody over. I mean, the idea is that he wins most of the matches, and, and then put... when it's time to put an Orange Cassidy over, you put the Orange Cassidy over. Yep. Then you've got to win some more matches again. So when it's time to put over MJF or whoever, or whoever's next down the road. But Daniel Bryan can't just go in there. The thing about the match was, like, the match was good, but I'm watching this match, and I'm, I'm you know, watching the Bryan start to do his comeback. And all of a sudden, Jey Uso hits a splash and pinned him. Right, it was so flat. It was, it was out of nowhere. It, it, I mean, it meant I would, I would, a little bit, but it, 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 it was, was a it, waste of a win over a guy who is one of the biggest stars in the entire company. Yeah, I mean, I I watched it, and it was it was number one. It was a short match where half the match was during the commercial break, and we didn't get picture in picture, which which we don't get on SmackDown anyway. But so it's kind of like you know you, you were nowhere near ready for it to end, and then all of a sudden, and it's just like super kick and frog splash, and it's like. That's not how you would work if you're going for the championship next. You know, I mean, you would, if anything, Daniel Bryan should have won. Then, you know, those guys, those two guys double team him. And then, yeah, that's, that's the thing. And the thing is, so, so Daniel Bryan's probably thinking, I just got to put this guy over strong because he's the young guy and I'm on my way out. But it's like, but you know, I mean, he, he would know. And I guess there's an idea. I don't know who it would be, but you know, Roman Reigns needs opponents and. You know, I mean, that's the one thing when we're well, watching. Well, he does, but again, it's Survivor Series. So, so no, do you he, really but... want to build up another opponent for a month, and then we're just going to have this Roman Reigns Randy Orton match? I mean, he doesn't need an opponent until after Survivor. No, but Series. he needs an opponent getting set up. He I'm not saying this guy Roman Reigns should be feuding with the guy on television this week, but what Roman Reigns? But there needs to be a guy, and there was no guy on this on this television show getting wins, and then. You know, every, you know, getting momentum and then he's ready for Roman Reigns. We don't have that guy. I mean, like Big E, if it was going to be Big E, Big E wasn't even on the show. So, I mean, that's, and there's really no other alternative there other than, I guess, Kevin Owens. Um, I guess that's the, the next best one, but he wasn't, he has, you know, he was, if that was the case, he should have murdered Dolph Ziggler, you know, and he didn't do that either. He just had a match with him. So, they don't. They're not getting anyone ready. I mean, it's like not for November, but there's you know life doesn't end in November. We may, but but it shouldn't. We got we got to go with the idea. It doesn't. Um, and then you got to be you know. I mean, that's the whole thing. You got to be ready. You know. I mean, are they going to go in there and go? Well, December's a throwaway show. Was is, is December t um, tables, ladders, and chairs? Right. Fuck. We just had a tables, ladders, and chairs match on Wednesday. So now we're going to do, you know, the chair match and all that stuff. So maybe they think that we can just... Uh, but you still need an opponent for that match. And then January, I guess you can do the weak opponent because it's the Royal Rumble. But still, I'd rather have a strong opponent than a weak opponent. But that's one of the, you know... But but as far as the other thing is, you know, I mean, the, the you know, SmackDown's got 
Roman Reigns, who's tr- been tremendous. Dude, all booking aside, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso's segments on this show were absolutely fantastic. The absolutely. first segment where Jey Uso, he's in tears. He's he's crying. He hates this guy. He tells him he hates him. Roman's just calmly saying, I know, but this is what you got to do. The whole family wants me to be the head of the table. And so he gives him till the end of the show, and then Jey Uso does his match. He beats Daniel Bryan, and then he accepts, and he turns, and he beats the hell out of Daniel Bryan, and Roman's just smiling the whole time. Roman and Jay were fantastic on this show. Roman and Jay were fantastic, and the Mysterio thing is a, is a good angle. Um, you know the thing about the Mysterio thing, too, was was somebody had texted us, and they said that Ali was the best actor in the company. I wouldn't say that at all, but... Well, but I will I, say this. From but she's all, a lot better than when she, she's a lot better than when she started, though. From all of the backstage segments that they have done, I didn't think that she was very good in any of them. Yep. But I did think that in the ring on SmackDown, she, was good. she had to tell her dad, "I'm not going with you," and I love him. She was great in that segment. She was good. She was good. Yes. Um, she's improving. She's improving. The angle's good. Um. You know, I know there's people have qualms about it. I, I, I have no qualms about it. Um, I know why you would, but I think you're overthink. I think people are overthinking it. It's kind of like my thought on it. But, um, I mean, I just think, you know, it's it, it, that's the kind of stuff that draws ratings, and it's a ratings game. So, um, yeah, it's good. And then, um, you know, and the rest of the show, I mean, was, was a show. You know, it's there. It's... Um, Sasha's defending against Bailey next week. The storyline being that Sasha can never successfully defend the title, so I presume this will be the first time. Yeah, she should she should retain it. Um I like that they do that because that's a true thing, because Vince always puts the belt on her and then takes it right off of her, and this time I don't think I don't think he's gonna do it this time. Um and he shouldn't, but uh but who knows? Um but yeah, yeah, they, they but and Bailey and Sasha Banks thing has been, you know, pretty good you know for for the show i mean they've been they've been good they, they've been good for months so they got some good i mean they've got good things going and um they it appears i hate to talk about ratings on saturday because by tuesday you'll get a different story and it might be the same story and it might be completely different but it looks the rating looked good i mean as far as like the the overnight number was uh, a very strong num- number um what that means as far as the makeup of the audience and everything like that, you know, again, Tuesday we'll know and, and that'll be um you know, even we'll we'll Tuesday I'll know no, but Monday we'll know most. So but it looks good and I'm not surprised. Um you know, as far as SmackDown goes, I mean the the thing on, on Friday night is it's not gonna be going against major sports for a while. And that's gonna help. I mean, um and so I think that number, was, by the way, was two point one three three million. So it was the best overnight number since September eleven. So if it holds up, that would be a very good, very good number. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, it's generally been it generally rises because the um, the hinderlands is stronger than the metropolitan areas, and the first number we get is 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 basically a prediction based on fifty five markets rather than like the whole country. And SmackDown's been outpacing it um, in the in the smaller markets. So the the final number is usually up about you know it could be up a hundred thousand or more. Um, it could be down too. I mean, it sometimes happens, but it's generally been up. So um, you know, it looks like it will be in excess of two point two million, which is you know more than they've been getting. Uh, the competition's weaker, and the other benefit they have is that normally this time of the year. Every, you know, all the TV shows, you know, start the new season and you have all these, you know, all the networks have their nice new shows. And this year, because of the pandemic and things not being filmed, that's not the case. They're going against, you know, um, I mean, there there are some new shows on, on Friday nights, but most I, I think that one of the networks was 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 new. And I think maybe an hour on another one. But there's a lot of reruns, which are usually not the case in October. So they. You know, and 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 then one of the things, the difference between there's a million differences between network and I don't want to get into this and network and cable, but um, but one of them is is that there are 35 million homes that don't have cable, 
at all. Sling, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, and those homes, these are t homes with television. So most of them get the network stations. Almost all of them do. So you're really, you know, like two-thirds, you're, or we're actually, yeah, two, 70%, let's say. 70% of your, you're in competition with everything on TV, all the cable and everything. But 30%, you're only in, 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 uh, competition with the other networks. When the other networks are giving, you're not even in competition with the news channels, um, which, which are killer right now. So that 30% of the audience, you're in competition with between eight and 10, really not much. So when, when you don't have a bunch of new shows out there, um, you're going to do better. So that's a, there's all these little factors that are that are playing into this. But but some of it is is that you know again it's a better location and it's a hotter show. I mean the show it was a good show. The characters are getting over, or the key characters. I don't know about the depth, but but the key characters are getting over and and that's what drives the business anyway. So they're doing they're the Friday's doing well. I mean as far as um, good TV and characters over and all that, which. You know, obviously, for most of this year, they were they were not doing well with that at all. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.